31st, 2023, and I would like to bring you this day in history. On March 31st, 1889, the Eiffel Tower is dedicated in Paris, and the ceremony presided over Gustave Eiffel, the tower's designer, and attended by French Prime Minister Pierre Trudet and a handful of dignitaries and 200 construction workers. In 1889, to honor the centenary of the French Revolution, the French government planned an international exposition and announced a design competition for the monument to be built on the Champ de Mars in central Paris. Out of more than a hundred designs submitted, the Centennial Committee chose Eiffel's plan as an open lattice wrought iron tower that would reach over a thousand feet above Paris and and be the world's tallest man-made structure. Eiffel's, Eiffel and noted bridge builder was a master of metal construction and designed the framework of the Statue of Liberty that had recently been erected in New York Harbor. Eiffel's tower was greeted with skepticism from critics who argued it would be structurally unsound and indignations from others who thought it would be an eyesore in the heart of Paris. Unperturbed, Eiffel completed his great tower under budget in just two years. Only one worker lost his life during the construction, which at the time was a remarkably low casualty number for a project of that magnitude. The light, airy structure was all, by all accounts, a techni technologically wonder and within a few decades came to be regarded as an architectural masterpiece. The Eiffel Tower is 984 feet tall and consists of a wrought iron framework supported on four masonry piers. From these rise four columns that unite to form a single vertical tower. Platforms, each with an observation deck, are at three levels. Elevators ascend the piers on a curve, and Eiffel construct, con contracted the Otis Elevator Company of United States to design the tower's famous glass cage elevator. The elevators are, were not complete on March 31st, 1889. However, so Gustav Eiffel ascended the tower stairs with a few hardy companions and raised an enormous French tricolor on the structure's flagpole. Fireworks were then set off on the second platform. Eiffel and his party descended and the architect addressed the guest and about 200 workers. In early May, the Paris International Exposition opened and the tower served as an entrance gateway to the giant fair. The Eiffel Tower remains the world's tallest man-made structure until the completion of the Chrysler Building in New York in 1930. Incredibly, the Eiffel Tower was almost demolished when the International Exposition's 20-year lease on the land expired in 1909. But its value as an antenna for radio transmitters saved it. It remains largely unchanged today, and it is one of the world's premier tourist attractions. Now I would like to bring you 10 things you may not know about the Eiffel Tower. And I want to tell you right now that some of these are a little bit of a repeat from my um, previous video, but um, it goes into a little bit of detail 
explaining 10 things you may not know about the Eiffel Tower. One, the Eiffel Tower was once yellow. In fashionably in fashionable Paris, even the Eiffel Tower must keep up with style trends. Over the decades, the Iron Lady has changed her looks with an application of a spectrum of paint colors. When it opened in 1889, the Eiffel Tower sported a reddish brown color. A decade later, it was coated in yellow paint. The tower was also yellowish brown and a chestnut brown before the adoption of the current specially mixed Eiffel Tower Brown in 1868. Every seven years, painters apply 60 tons of paint to the tower to keep her looking young. The tower is painted in three shades, prospectively lighter with elevation, in order to augment the structure's silhouette against the canvas of the Parisian sky. Two. It was built to celebrate the centennial of the French Revolution. Organizers of the 1889 Exposition Universelle, which commemorated the 100-year anniversary of the fall of the Bastille and the launch of the French Revolution, staged an open competition to design a spectacular centerpiece to their World's Fair. Out of 107 proposals, they selected the design submitted by Eiffel along with architect Stephen Sauveur and engineers Maurice Cochillen and Emile Nivergu. Number three. For four decades, it was the world's tallest structure. At 986 feet, the Eiffel Tower was nearly double the height of the world's previous tallest structure, the 555-foot Washington Monument, when it opened in 1890, 1889. It was not to be surpassed until the completion of the 1,046-foot Chrysler Building in New York in 1930. Although the Eiffel Tower eclipsed by the Chrysler Building in height with the addition of the antenna in 1957, it still thrilled, trailed behind another Gotham skyscraper, the Empire State Building. Number four, the Eiffel Tower was once the world's largest billboard. When dust fell across Paris between 1925 and 1936, a quarter of a million color bulbs attached three sides of the tower steeple illuminated to spill out the hundred foot vertical letters of a French automobile com company, Citron. The advertisement blazed so brightly it was visible from nearly 20 miles away. And Charles Lindbergh used it as a beacon when he landed in Paris on his 1927 solo transatlantic flight. Number five, Gustave Eiffel designed part of another famous landmark. When, it, when the initial design of the Statue of Liberty in interior elements died suddenly in 1879, French sculptor Frédéric Augusta Barthololi hired Eiffel as a replacement. Already renowned as a structural engineer and a railroad bridge designer, Eiffel designed the skeleton support system to which the statue's copper skin is affixed. Today, a scale model of the Statue of Liberty stands on an island in River Sheen in the shadow of the Eiffel Tower. Number six, Parisian artists petition against the monstrous structure. Although now worldwide symbol of romance, 
The radical design of Eiffel Tower inspired anything but love in the hearts of 300 prominent Parisian artists and intelli intellectuals who signed a following manifesto that in the Letres newspaper on Valentine's Day in 1887, we writers, painters, sculptors, architects, passionately lovers of beauty, now intact of Paris, hereby protest with all our might, with all our indignation, in the name of French taste gone, unrecognized, in the name of French art and history under threat against the construction in every heart of our capital, in the heart of our capital, of the useless and monstrous Eiffel Tower. The sea discreet even said that the gig gigantic black factory chimney was so loath that even commercial-minded Americans does not want it. Number seven, radio saved the Eiffel Tower from destruction. Since the Eiffel eight, since Eiffel footed 80% of the tower's construction cost, he was permitted to have the structure stand for 20 years in order to recoup his investment before it passed into the hands of Parisian government, which planned to disassemble it for scrap metal. Seeking a way to prove the structure's strategic utility in a bid to save it, I fully erected an antenna atop the tower and financed experiments with wireless telegraph that began in 1898. The value of the tower was in spending and receiving in sending and receiving wireless messages, particularly from the French military, caused the city to renew Eiffel's concession when it expired in 1909. Today, more than 110 I on the tower beam radio and television broadcast across the world. Number eight, the Eiffel Tower contributed to the capture of Mata Hari. During World War I, the French Revolution used the tower's wireless station to intercept enemy messages from Britain, from Berlin. In 1914, the French were able to organize a counterattack during the Battle of Marie after secretly learning that the German army was halting its advance. Three years later, the station atop the Eiffel Tower intercepted a coded message between German and Spain that offered details about Operation H-21. Based in part on it, this message, the French arrested, convicted, and executed legendary spy Mata Hari from spying on behalf of Germany. Number nine, the tower housed a scientific laboratory. Eiffel engraved the names of 72 of the country's scientists in the tower's first level gallery and atop the structure he installed a laboratory that was used by himself and French scientists to study astronomy, meteorology, aerodynamics, and physiology and test experiments such as the Foucault's pendulum. In 1909, Eiffel installed an aerodynamic wind tunnel at the base of the tower that carried out thousands of tests, including those on the Wright Brothers airplane and Porsche automobiles. Number 10, daredevils have died attempting aerial feats at the tower. Using everything from parachutes to bungee cords, adventures for decades have used the tower to stage daring stunts. Not all thrill seekers have defied death, however. In 1912, French Taylor Franz Richout 
attempted to fly from the tower's first floor with a spring-loaded parachute suit, but crashed 187 feet to the ground instead. 14 years later, aviator Leon Collat was killed attempting to fly his plane beneath the span of the tower when it became entangled in the aerial from the wireless station and crashed in a ball of flame. I want to thank you for watching today. And as always, I want you to stay safe and stay blessed. And remember to smile because I love you. But more importantly, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, loves you the most. And remember, I go live at 5 every Saturday night. That's 5 Central every Saturday night. And we just have a good time over there. And if you like my history videos, you might like some of my other videos I put out. Um, junk journal videos, haul videos, ride with me videos, um, vlogging with the family videos. So go over and check some of those videos out. And also this video, this really helps me if you give my videos a and comment down below. Let me know what you think of the videos. And also it helps my channel out if you subscribe. I'm trying to get to that 800 mark and it would be great if I had 800 serendipity subbies. All right, everybody, have a blessed day, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, everybody.